Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. The Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call on you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. So as we continue to follow the Lord, even in these days of unexpected uh, events, as we continue to, to long for the Lord to come, as our final reading from First Thessalonians today, it was all about that, just we need to, to persevere. We need to, to, to continue in season or out. We don't know uh, what these days fully mean, only in the, the, the final recourse of history when we look back in 50 years' time will we be able to understand and interpret all of these days and these events. So for the moment, all we can do is faithfully follow the Lord. So let's begin by acknowledging our need of God and praying for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You will not be expecting us to write anything to you, brothers, about times and seasons, since you know very well that the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night. It is when people are saying how quiet and peaceful it is that the worst suddenly happens, as suddenly as labour pains come on a pregnant woman and there will be no way for anybody to evade it. It is not as if you live in the dark, my brothers, for that day will overtake you like a thief. No, you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to darkness, so we should not go on sleeping as everyone else does, but stay wide awake and sober. God never meant us to experience the retribution, but to win, to win salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that, alive or dead, we should live united with him. So give encouragement to each other and keep strengthening one another as you, all, as you do already. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to save the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart, hope in the Lord. 
I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Great. The great prophet has appeared among us. God has visited his people. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath. And his teaching made a deep impression on them, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue there was a man who was possessed by the spirit of an unclean devil, and he shouted at the top of his voice, Ha! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus said sharply, Be quiet, come out of him. And the devil, throwing the man down in front of everyone, went out of him without hurting him at all. Astonishment seized them, and they were all saying to one another, What teaching? He gives orders to unclean spirits with authority and power, and they come out. And reports of him went all through the surrounding countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul, well, our readings conclude. It's not the, the conclusion to this first letter to the Thessalonians, but he's has this deep desire, deep longing for this community, that they might grow in holiness, that they might be the people in the community that he knows them capable of being. He wants them to set aside all of the, the things that seem to be getting in the way of, of following Jesus, all of those things that have distracted them, essentially. And so he's calling them to holiness above all. He wants them just to give their hearts and their lives to God. And so these final exhortations, it seems to, to be this, uh, this mood that is present within the community that what's the point of working? What's the point of doing anything meaningful at the moment? Because surely Jesus is coming soon. Jesus promised that, that he would come soon. And of course, there would have been the increasing tension. Even now in the early 50s, the writing would have been on the wall and in some ways there was increasing tension between the Romans and the Jewish uh, communities. <clears throat> Even here in, in Greece, in Thessalonica, they would have felt that, that tension beginning to, to be present. And so there was that sense, what, what can they do? What's, how do we find a way through all of this? And the, the final section of, of the reading you know, has even more practical exhortations just to, to rejoice, to, to, to live in the present moment, just to give ourselves to the Lord fully. And that's what Paul is wanting us to know. We don't know when the, the time and the day. There is this sense of expectancy present at this moment, but Paul says, no, that's, that's not true. And of course, 2,000 years of, of history since then has, has demonstrated that we don't know the time. We don't know when the Lord will return but all we can do, all we can know, is how to encourage each other in the present moment, how to face the reality of giving ourselves fully to the Lord in this present moment. That's our task, that's our role, that's our responsibility, to encourage each other, to continue to faithfully do the little things that the Lord has given to us to do, not to be distracted, not to, to be concerned about the, the big picture, kinds of things that has its place and its role but for the moment what can we do we can love God we can give ourselves to to that worship we can give ourselves in prayer we can reach out to others in this moment of darkness we can call others to that place of encouragement there are many of us who have experienced this the power of unclean spirits these possessions these things that that don't call us into the presence of God but all of these situations, all of these uh, experiences 
can be broken by the power of God's love. So let's indeed encourage one another and continue to, to give ourselves fully and faithfully to the work that God has given us to do today. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. We come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it accomplishes in mystery, what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen the first Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you, give, all, give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaseless, ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your son, who alone is just, handed, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the cup, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The second mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are a faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they share this one bread and one cup, that they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Brian, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, especially Mary Cox, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbour. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the God of all life be with you and bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to announce the gospel of the Lord. <laughs>